The protagonist is an ambitious girl named Chi. She has a beautiful singing voice, and her dream is to star in a musical drama someday. But behind the happy face, Chi hides a dark secret that defies all laws of nature. She has the unique power to see how much time a person has left to live. It is more of a curse for her, because she can do nothing about the deaths other than wait for the inevitable. One afternoon, she is traveling by bus when she witnesses a series of crashes on a bridge. The police and paramedics arrive immediately and begin rescuing people. Chi looks at the chaos from a different perspective than everyone else because she can see how much time the people have left. Then she comes across an older couple who are shaken by the accident but not hurt. As she hands the wife a band-aid, she notices the husband has only a minute to live. She stands there helplessly, unsure what she should do. Eventually, the man suffers a heart attack. Chi tells the wife to calm down and enjoy the last minutes with him. She is glad to have helped even a little bit because her power makes her feel helpless in situations like this. After that, it is revealed that she has only 167 days left. Knowing that she will die in a few months, she wants to live her life to the fullest. This is why she auditions for every musical show in the town, hoping to land a role. Sometime later, she visits a woman named Miss O in the hospital. Despite the age difference, they are good friends. Miss O has been dating a man named Mr. Park since yesterday. Chi notices that he only has 67 days to live, while Miss O still has two years. She doesn't react to the info, but feels bad for them. Then, she is just leaving the hospital when she is hit by a car. The car happens to be driven by a young man named Lee, who suffers from anxiety attacks and is afraid to drive. He is the son of a wealthy businessman and the owner of a budding entertainment company. Chi isn't hurt, but instead of apologizing, Lee blames her for being careless. They get into an argument before he forcefully makes her sit in a wheelchair. He wants a doctor to check her, so she won't take advantage of the situation and sue his ass later. This causes her to run extremely late to an audition. She asks Lee for a ride and gets inside the car, even though he repeatedly asks her to go away. Upon noticing that he is afraid to drive, she gets behind the wheel and reaches the destination in a blink. After she wishes him goodbye, Lee realizes she has taken the car keys with her. He follows her and ends up in an auditorium. Then, we are introduced to a strict musical choreographer named Joe. He is a perfectionist and rejects even the best of the performances. She is nervous, but she sings a beautiful song about childhood love. Lee watches her from the audience, amazed by her talent. But Joe says her performance lacks meaning. He asks her to prove that she has been in love before. She panics and scans the audience. Upon seeing Lee, she rushes to him and plants a brief kiss on his lips. Still, Joe remains unimpressed and she is rejected. Lee, on the other hand, is shocked. He accuses her of stealing his key and assaulting him. Chi simply hands him the key and apologizes before leaving. Seeing her cry makes Lee feel bad for yelling at her. At night, Chi meets her best friend, Sung Hee, who knows about her gift. As they talk, we find out that no matter what Chi does to save a person from dying, it never works. Even in the safest condition, they either die from a heart attack or an accident. Somewhere else, Lee is on a romantic date with his girlfriend, B. She is also the daughter of a wealthy businessman and a perfect match for Lee. But unlike him, she is arrogant and manipulative. Lee has proposed to her several times, and she accepts the rings every time but never says yes. She knows that Lee is not in love with her and wants him to feel the same way she does before marrying him. Lee is going to China the next day to meet an investor. The next morning, Chi also gets an offer for a scuba guide gig in China. She says goodbye to her mother and younger brother before catching the flight. After landing, both Lee and Chi end up staying at the same villa. Lee's secretary informs him that the investor Zhen has planned for them to go scuba diving the next day. Although nervous, Lee can't say no to an investor. Later, the group goes scuba diving, and Lee finds out that she is their guide. They dive into the water under her leadership and explore the ocean. After the tour, she leads everyone back up. When everyone is on the boat, she realizes Lee didn't follow them. She quickly dives back in and finds him. Lee, who had given up hope, 
is relieved to see her. They share the oxygen tube and swim upwards while holding hands. Just then, she notices that her timer has frozen. She looks at it in shock and falls unconscious. When she wakes up, she is inside the boat and the watch is working normally. But when Lee comes into the room, it stops again. A shocked Chi stares at him and then back at her wrist. To test if Lee stopped it, she walks away from him. As she had predicted, the timer only stops when she is near him. This would mean that if she stays with him, she might have a chance to live longer. In the following scene, Chi is back in Korea with Sung Hee. She is just as shocked when told about the timer stopping on its own. Moreover, Chi remembers that she didn't see a timer on Lee. A week later, she is informed that Lee and director Joe are teaming up to organize a musical. It is a large level project with a high budget. If Chi gets the part, she will be closer to Lee and at the same time will fulfill her dream. Starting the next day, she trains like crazy and prepares her best for the performance. Meanwhile, Lee and Joe silently fight to get more authority over the selection process. Joe doesn't want anyone else's interference in the play, but since Lee is the organizer, he pushes his way in. On the day of the audition, Chi performs a song and does way better than the last time. Strangely enough, the song makes Lee feel a weird sensation in his heart, almost as if his heart is beating to the rhythm. Unable to bear the feeling, he comes outside. Chi notices his absence and tells Sung Hee about it. Being a good friend, she thinks of a plan to set her up with Lee. The results of the audition will be announced later, but Chi had made it her mission to stalk Lee and lengthen her lifetime. This is the first good excuse for stalking I've seen on this channel. Later, she goes to his office and poses as a candidate, applying to be his driver. Lee asks her to get out, but she insists that she is the best person for the job. When Lee leaves, she even follows him to his home and boldly asks him out on a date. He denies the proposal, but before they can talk further, a group of three men interrupts them. They are actors sent by Sung Hee to attack Lee. The plan was that Chi will save him and win his heart, but they all end up in the police station. The police officer calms Lee down and asks him to stay in the waiting room. While waiting, Chi dozes off on his shoulder. Lee wants to hate her for it, but he cannot help but feel a warm sensation in his chest. He touches her hand and rationalizes it as him paying her back for saving his life while scuba diving. What they both do not see is that the timer in her arm goes into reverse, lengthening her life instead of shortening it. After that, he and Chi come outside. Initially, she tries to talk to him and he ignores her. But before leaving, he gives her the car keys and asks her to be on time tomorrow. Chi has actually landed the job as his driver, which means she can be with him often and lengthen her lifetime. While driving away, Lee watches her celebrate and smiles. The next morning, he finds out all the background information about her. Chi was born into a wealthy family, but after her father was imprisoned for money embezzlement, they had to face a huge loss. The family's current living conditions are not ideal, but Chi is ambitious about her future. Then, Lee goes outside and watches her singing happily while waiting for him. He doesn't know it, but just looking at her makes him feel better about everything. They drive to his office, and the entire time he tries hard not to look at her. Throughout the day, she doesn't leave his mind, making him go crazy. At one point, he starts yelling at his laptop, imagining that he is Chi. That's what I do when I'm in love with a girl too. I yell at her. She, on the other hand, tries to stay as close to him as possible. Later that day, they bump into Joe, who remembers Chi from the audition. He compliments her voice and says that she has improved from the last time. The results are yet to be announced, but the comment makes Chi very happy. Lee notices the change in her mood and feels a pang of jealousy. When she gushes about the director, the jealousy turns into irritation and he asks her to shut up. What an alpha. Later, Lee sees a picture in his office that he doesn't like anymore. His assistant takes it off the wall and comments that he doesn't like a picture for more than three months. Lee registers that if he looks at one thing for a long time, he no longer finds them attractive. He decides to use the same technique to get rid of his feelings for Chi. Hence, after work, he asks her to come with him for dinner. She is confused about the sudden kindness, but she agrees to go. Unlike what Lee has thought, he cannot stop staring at her and gets even more frustrated. For a while, Chi is alone and gets a call from her father in prison. Lee sees how much she misses him and feels bad for her. 
After dinner, when they are walking to the car, Lee happens to hold her arm. She notices the timer going in reverse and is shocked. She doesn't tell Lee about it, but the concept is wild for her, since she had accepted her death a long time ago. Then, Lee brings her to the cinema, saying that he has to get his mind off of things. Chi, as a good employee, follows him behind. While they are watching the movie, Chi wants to make sure that the timer actually stops when she touches him. She unknowingly touches his hand, which gives rise to an awkward interaction. Lee gets so close to her that she feels her cheeks fluster. She looks back at the timer, and as predicted, it has reversed. The following day, Chi gets an email saying that she hasn't been selected for the musical. She bumps into Joe in the hallways, who says that her voice had emotions, but she wasn't able to express them. She is a raw gem, but they are looking for a polished one for this musical. When he starts criticizing her, Chi snaps back. She calls him a peanut and walks away, leaving both him and the audience baffled. Later that day, Lee and B run into Chi, and B finds out that she is the new driver. She instantly gets her guard up and invites her to dinner with her and Lee. He doesn't want to go with both of them, but Chi doesn't seem to have a problem with it. At the restaurant, they are informed that only two in-house seats are reserved, so Chi will have to stay on the terrace and eat alone. Lee asks her to return home, because it would seem like they are disrespecting her, but B argues otherwise. She even hands Chi a check to pay for her meal. In the end, Lee and B are eating together, but he cannot stop looking at Chi. She is enjoying her meal, which is surprising to Lee, because to him, she was just humiliated. B excuses herself to go to the washroom, and Lee takes the opportunity to go to Chi. He drags her outside the restaurant and asks her how she can be okay seeing him with another woman. Chi looks at him in confusion when he confesses that he likes her. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like if you think that Lee was a beta male. Thank you for watching.